G'day and welcome to The Fred Paul Show. Well, the hot word in leftist circles these days is decolonization, which is the term for the program to diminish or delete Western civilization wherever possible, whether it be from our art, our language. Yiru du Marang. You've just said good morning to me. Our politics or our history. What these decolonizers ignore is that Australia is being colonized again. And this time the result will not be the creation of a thriving nation state or a culture with a solid work ethic combined with an appreciation of freedom, prosperity and individuality. No, the newly colonized Australia will look more like this. This was recorded on Tuesday night in Martin Place, Sydney. At the far end of Martin Place is Sydney's main cenotaph, the memorial to our fallen soldiers, who, if they saw this, would wonder why they bothered fighting at all. Call me presumptuous, but pr call me presumptuous, but I don't think any Australian soldiers died so that this significant site in the centre of Sydney and many other streets and parks around the country could resound to a call to prayer from the Middle East. Whatever virtues Islam has for its adherence, compat compatibility with liberal Western democracy is not one of them. Despite the proliferation of mosques around the West, this new phenomenon of praying in public places has suddenly increased around the world. Here are some exa recent examples from Spain, Belgium, blocking the streets so the infidels can't get past, Napoli in Italy, Times Square in New York, and, of all places, Anfield Stadium in Liverpool. Just when we should be debating where all this is heading and the signs of where it is heading is everywhere, we have leaders who instead are racing to hasten this Islamification process. Two days ago, Foreign Minister Penny Wong delivered a speech at the Australian National University that claimed, quote, more than 33,000 Palestinians have been killed by the, the Israeli Defence Force, including many thousands of women and children. Well, the only source for that information is the Gaza Ministry of Health, which is notoriously unreliable. Data, an data analyst Abraham Weiner published an analysis of the ministry's figures last month and concluded that, quote, the numbers are not real. That much is obvious to anyone who understands how naturally occurring numbers work. The casualties are not overwhelmingly women and children and the majority may be Hamas fighters. Well, Foreign Minister Penny Wong knows those figures are fake, but that doesn't stop her using them to give the growing number of Islamic voters, most of them in Labor electorates, a nudge and a wink. She knows how much they hate Jews and Israel, but doesn't want to lose their votes. So she places all Australia's pressure on Israel to call a ceasefire while she holds Hamas which is still holding 40 or so hostages, to a much lower standard. She added, quote, We do all this to keep Australia prosperous and secure at home and confident in the world. Well, Australian prosperity is only diminished by the increasing aggression of Hamas and their pirate partners in the Gulf disrupting shipping, to which Australia is more reliant than most. A ceasefire initiated by Israel would not make Australia more secure. If anything, it would be another sign that the West is losing its cojones and would embolden terrorism around the world, even here. 
And the only confidence Wong is encouraging is for Muslims to make even more demands of the Western liberal nations to which they have migrated. What Wong is really saying is that Labor cares less about Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, than she does about appeasing Muslims in marginal electorates in the western suburbs of Sydney and Melbourne. Well, that is a far cry from what Bob Hawke, as president of the Australian Council of Trade Unions, told the Zionist Federation of Australia and New Zealand 50 years ago this year. It was a risky move for him even back then. He started his speech that night by saying, quote, The circumstances under which I speak and you listen to me this evening provide some measure of the blind hatred and fanaticism of Israel's enemies. I have been advised amicably that it would be wiser not to be here this evening and say the things I intend to, intend to say. For obvious reasons of one's integrity, this advice has not been accepted. This is not personally pleasant, but the ramifications for our Australian way of life are even more important. As an individual Australian, I know that I am not an island, and I know that if we allow the bell to toll for Israel, it will have tolled for me, for us all. Hawke, of course, went on to become one of Australia's most loved prime ministers and never compromised his devotion to Israel as the only liberal democracy in the Middle East. If he were alive today, he would, like the soldiers honoured at the Cenotaph in Martin Place, be wondering why he bothered. The irony is that while Australia extends the hand of friendship to Muslims from the Middle East, they reply, by demanding spaces in which to pray and call for the genocide of Jews on our streets. They also generally, with a few exceptions, fail to integrate into our liberal culture. Jews never have and never will be as much of a hassle for the rest of us. But Wong and Albanese have seen this rising Islamic demographic as nothing more than electoral gold which is why Wong is now calling for a two-state solution between Israel and Palestine. <laughs> well, not even Hamas believes in a two-state solution. It has stated it would prefer a perpetual war with Israel until it has wiped out the Jews from Israel. Suitably enough, Wong's policy is just as irrational and self-destructive.